Hey guys, it's Grant and Shelby. Today we're just sitting down discussing um, injuries, their impact, how we have personally overcome our own or are currently trying to overcome our own. Just wanting to open up a discussion as to, you know, trying to make it clear that injuries happen, life happens, but we want to be able to open up that discussion so people feel comfortable talking about their own and hopefully, you know, maybe our experiences can help other people combat the injuries that they're currently experiencing. Going off of that, with the most common injuries, back, the forearms, and the shoulders are, are kind of the, the, the key ones to talk about. Shelby, before, before I met her, uh, she actually had a problem with her lower back, and she can deep dive more into that. So when I was 14, 15 years old, I was playing competitive volleyball year round along with um, seasonal track and I was a jumper in track. You know, when I, it was my sophomore year of high school, kind of early on in the volleyball season, I started experiencing some lower back pain, but it, in the sport, it's kind of considered normal to experience pains every once in a while, so I didn't really think much of it. Made it through the school season and then I was into my club season, which is, you know, in the uh, winter and spring. It was during that club season, things just really quickly escalated and got worse and worse and worse until it was to the point where it was an excruciating pain no matter what I did, no matter how I moved. It got to the point where in the middle of a match, in the middle of a tournament, I left the court in tears and had to be taken off to rest because I just I couldn't move anymore and it got to, that's when you know myself and my parents decided this is something much more serious than just a common injury um, I went to see a spinal specialist and essentially I had a hairline fracture in my L5 vertebrae which is the lowest vertebrae in your back I was told that I am susceptible to that due to a spinal condition that essentially is described as my my bones in my spine are not as dense as other people's, so they are really susceptible to fracturing. That was really hard news for me to take, especially at the age of 15. Volleyball was my entire life, and it was in that moment I was told, you can't play anymore, at least for the next year, at least until you can recover. I can tell you now I did not handle that news very well. I kind of dove into... A little bit of a depression during my junior year where I had to sit on the sidelines. I, that was that would have been my first varsity season. You know, I was really excited about the upcoming season and then it was ripped away from me because my, my body essentially, in my mind, was retaliating against me. You know, I still deal with that back problem. I still have to be really cognizant of my body, especially when it comes to my spine. For a while I wasn't able to squat heavy, for a while I wasn't able to do really anything lower body centric, very heavy, I just had to do a high rep with low weight. Um, eventually I recovered enough to where I feel pretty comfortable now lifting heavier weight, but it's still the fact that if I start feeling that pain again, I have to tell myself to stop. That's still a struggle for me at the age of 22, you know, it's been seven years of me dealing with this problem. I still kind of struggle with the reality of it. Things are a lot better now in regards to my back, but it's still something I definitely have to be careful. With. And so one of your most recent injuries, you know, it's it, it's your elbows and your wrists as well, and which that's coming from stress from your job and, and stress from a lot of things. And uh, go ahead and talk a little bit more about that too. Fast forward to about two years ago. I have been a barista for about three years now. Two years ago out of that three years, I started experiencing pain in my left wrist. I just kind of associated it with the job. It's pretty common as a barista to experience pain from repetitive motions and that is what I felt I was experiencing. Slapped a wrist brace on it. It seemed to get better like six months later. Okay, cool, the problem's gone. Not quite after things started feeling better things started feeling exponentially worse. Um, it moved to my right wrist and it was to the point where I was working with two wrist braces on. Lifting anything upper body was getting really difficult. That's when I decided to see a physical therapist through workers comp. Um, assuming that it was the job that was the problem, essentially just from the repetitive motions. And when I saw that physical therapist, he essentially told me that the answer was stop lifting weights. He said he basically looked at me and said like it's your weight lifting. It's not it's not your job. Sorry. And I I wasn't willing to accept that answer. 
because I see people lift weights every day and they don't experience the same problem. You know, I assumed it was probably a combination of work and lifting, but just stopping lifting wasn't wasn't my answer. Um, I'd already had volleyball ripped away from me at one point in my life. I wasn't about to have weightlifting ripped away from me either. So I stopped seeing that physical therapist and just kind of dealt with the problem on my own. It's been a kind of repetitive cycle of getting better, getting worse, getting better, getting worse, and I'll have periods of times where things are great and I can lift weights, I can work, everything's fine. Um, and then recently things took a pretty bad spiral for the worst. It was getting difficult to do simple tasks like brushing my hair or you know, picking up my backpack. Everything was getting difficult because I was always in pain. And my wrists, I was bracing them so much that I was overcompensating then with the next joint up being my elbow. So then I started experiencing a lot of pain in both of my elbows and I was feeling helpless. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't work. I couldn't lift. I felt in a completely helpless state and so I decided to see another physical therapist. Basically he taught me a couple of different stretches that were essentially useless to me and after about a week of treatment he asked me, hey like are things getting better? I said well, uh, no, not really, like things basically feel the same if not a little bit worse. And his response to that was, well, you should be better by now. I don't know what to tell you, I'm gonna stop your treatment. <laughs> and uh, after that, I've just spiraled really uncontrollably into a state of a lot of physical pain, a lot of mental turmoil. He can attest to that. I, I've been kind of a mess the last couple of months. It's, it's still hard for me to come to terms with it. Again, there are periods where it's better, there are periods when it's worse, and when I get back into the periods where it's worse and it's affecting my weightlifting, it's affecting, you know, the one thing that really helps me relieve stress and helps me feel in control of my body and my life, which is weightlifting, and when my own body is doing something that's stopping me from doing that, it's, it's really hard for me to come to terms and I really I really try I really try to be positive about it he helps me a lot with that you know trying just to center me and let me know like this isn't the end of the world we'll find a solution you know if your body is telling you to stop you need to stop and I do have a hard time with that sometimes a lot of the times I don't know it's I need to talk about it more which is kind of what this is right now because you know it's it's okay to feel a little helpless whenever you're injured. What's not okay is ignoring your body's warning signs. I did that for too long. I ignored my body's warning signs, you know, with the little twinges of pain every once in a while. Just kind of thought, well, whatever, like I can handle it. I can deal with a little bit of pain. And that was the same thing I did with my back. I just sort of took it as a normal thing, went about my business and things got so much worse and now I'm at a point where because I ignored those warning signs for so long I'm no longer in a state of prevention I'm in a state of having to deal with the full-fledged injury and trying to reverse that which is so much harder than preventing the injury in the first place well said <laughs> So you've also had some issues with your wrists, um, your forearms have had some issues, so you've had a little, you deal with things a little bit better than I do, so I'm sure you might be able to help a little bit with your experience as well. Yeah, so getting into college, you know, like, like I said about the other video, I really started getting into weightlifting, um, started falling in love with it, and um, there were some things to where I didn't know the proper technique to begin with. Um, for instance, like bicep curls, I kept my, my I, I rolled my wrist way too forward, um, and which that caused me to injure my TCFF. I forgot what it's actually mean. Um, it's this little triangular kind of thing that actually uh, stabilizes your wrist and keeps everything equal, like uh, weight distribution on it, right? Uh, I actually injured that, um, went to a doctor, they gave me all of these pills, or like, make sure you take this, make sure you're in this brace for, roughly around six weeks. Well, I mean, with us, we're, we don't, we're not really gonna listen to much doctors, and so we, um, I, I was still lifting with it. I was still doing all this other stuff with it. 
um, and which caused me to then even prolong my uh, time with it. Um, we tried adding wraps, we tried adding all this other stuff into our routine to make sure you know we were we were properly using um, all all of this uh, technique to, to to help our wrists and everything and in which that didn't work out and so I believe it was roughly around what do you want to say like 12 14 weeks roughly around there I want to say yeah. that was until like I finally got better strength with that or it being injured to being better is one took a lot more rest two I actually researched and looked up and found that neutral grip actually doesn't really affect much of the TCFF compared to uh, a standard like bench press, a standard shoulder press, um, a lot of stuff that, that um, puts a lot of pressure on, on, on your wrist. So I steer cleared away from those um, for the whole time and it started feeling better. And then I would t I took it very, very, very easy. And, and which the whole thing is, you know, I, I, sh I should have listened to my body earlier instead of going through x-rays, instead of talking to a doctor. I mean, I, I did enjoy that I talked to a doctor. I was just frustrated because I didn't listen to him at the beginning. Looking at it in hindsight, you know, you definitely want to listen to the experts about this. Uh, whenever, whenever you're going to be doing some some sort of physical physical activity, especially with weightlifting, right? And then, and then there's another thing too. You have you also have to do a give and take because sometimes the experts, like like for PT, they don't really give the best advice. So you kind of have to go with your own gut, right? And, and so I, I I went with my own gut on this one, and in which it didn't turn out as well. So um, that later on, listen to uh, Jason, our chiropractor, about it, and then. And uh, thankfully, he's, he's he's actually a weightlifter, so he, he's able to understand, you know, why we're in the gym. He definitely gets us, and, and which that's the one thing I really appreciate about him, and uh, I kind of listen to, to his advice. Seeking professional help is a good thing. My experiences may not have been the best, but I'm, I'm in a state now where I realize that I just, I need to keep trying until I have somebody that's willing to help me in the way that I want to be helped. He mentioned our chiropractor. He's been... He's been a really good influence in this whole situation. Every time I see him, he actually takes the time to listen to me and talk to me. And, you know, his solution isn't, let's rip away the thing that you want to do. It's how can we adjust the way you're doing it. That's a huge thing, is adjustment. For me, at, at one point, I ended up having to take two weeks off of lifting because that was just where my body was at, that's where my mental state was at. It was getting so unbelievably frustrating and painful to be in the weight room. I had to kind of just bite the bullet, swallow my ego, and just say, okay, this is my body telling me I need a break. And that break let my body refresh. It kind of set me up for success whenever I did go back into the weight room. I'm not saying my injury disappeared. You know, it still exists. I still don't understand what it is. I'm still trying to figure that out, which is, Definitely the frustrating part is the unknown. You just, you kind of have to roll with the punches and play with the cards you're dealt. I've been weak enough in the past to just give up in frustration and I'm slowly learning thanks to his help and thanks to failures in the past that I just have to learn to listen to my body. That's really the bottom line here is making sure that, you know, when your body is sending some sort of trigger of pain, that's its only means of communication to you that something's wrong. And when you choose to actively ignore that, that's when things can go wrong. You know, it is frustrating and whatnot, but you also have to think about that it's it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. The the, the best analogy whenever you're whenever you're thinking about a lot of things everything's gonna take more time than, than you think. Anyway, um, hope you guys enjoy this video uh, about our personal testimonies. You know, we wanna do more like this. Um, if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts on what, what else we should do on the channel, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, thank you so much for watching.